guys, I have a confession to make. I'm not a fan of the Five Nights at Freddy's series. I've criticized the series before years ago, and my feelings really haven't shifted much on the matter, especially with how Security Breach was handled. I don't like you. And also, why are you moving at a lower frame rate than anything else? However, even though I still feel pretty meh about FNAF as a whole, FNAF Into the Pit is seriously one of the best FNAF games ever released. I watched my friend play it on the, you guessed it, our collaborative gaming channel. To see FNAF go from humble beginnings from one developer to a team, and now FNAF is in the hands of an indie developer, Mega Cat Studios. And man, let me tell you, the art style is a fresh new take on the concept while still feeling like FNAF. The genuine eeriness is unsettling, especially when you have to swipe away spider so you don't get caught, and my personal favorite part of the game, the arcade cabinets. Throughout the game, you find these weird parts that seemingly don't make sense as to what you use them for. Once you get to this room, it immediately clicks that these are arcade cabinet parts. Ten different machines sit in the room, and most of them can be fixed. There's a skee-ball machine, a frogger-like pizza delivery game, space shooter, free weight simulator, Pac-Man, 2D platformer collect-a-thon, stupid boring slide puzzle, and space invaders. Two of the ten are broken beyond repair, one of them looks like another spaceship game, the other one might be a claw machine, but it's hard to tell. Out of the eight that work, if you are successful during gameplay, you gain some tickets which can be used in the prize machine. So not only are you able to play minigames, but you are rewarded for winning. These prizes include an old handheld gaming device and stickers, which are little souvenirs as well as a tradable item. Pager has the vibes. If those vibes were your mysterious boss and this corporation engaging in espionage and the target is you. These black and white rooms constantly have you wondering why your boss is not being fully honest with you. You constantly get ordered to follow instructions to a T. And if you don't, then you are forced to do it again, but do it right this time. Or you could just play Flappy Bird. <laughs> yep. Once you finish with the demo, you walk into this office, turn to see this computer, and play a version of Flappy Bird. Considering Flappy Bird is no longer in existence on the App Store, this is just the next best thing. This is a nice little reward for finishing the demo that has absolutely nothing to do with the core mechanics of the rest of the game, but it really stood out to me and gave me the idea of this concept in the first place. Years ago, I made a video about Oneros, a walking simulator. If you know me, you know that this is one of my favorite genres of gaming due to the typical first-person emotional narrative it contains. There is just something about playing as another person and looking through their eyes that I find to be captivating and occasionally makes me feel for that person. In one of these rooms of the game is a bedroom. On the desk, there is a laptop with a password. There are, in fact, two games available here. Miami Street Skater 3 has high scores where I did not so great the last time I played this game. This is a simple 2D skater where we can jump and do tricks. On the top right of the screen are where our points reside, which can be influenced by our range, tricks, and coins. Obstacles like pedestrians, rails, balls, hills, and gaps stand in our way as we venture forward. One detail that I greatly appreciate is that every time you start, the game's obstacles are in a different order, so memorization will get you nowhere. After getting a new high score and the achievement it came with, I felt a new sense of accomplishment that I previously haven't felt with this game. The other part of the time where I failed, at least the ragdoll physics were kind of funny, and at least the controller works with this minigame. Unicorn's Revenge is the other minigame where we can puke rainbows on evil sentient vegetables as the unicorn bleeds from his face. The puke is tied to a collectible system where the more you puke, the more your bar depletes, so spamming it immediately punishes you. For a 2D platformer, it's pretty challenging, but at least I beat it. On the surface, this seems like a dumb multiplayer game where monsters chase you. It's not the right way, I'm go- oh, That made my anxiety shoot up so much. Oh, that scared me. And you would be right. However, there is a second part to this game that makes it even better of an experience. Spooktube is a website where you upload your videos in the game. The more views you get, the more money you get, which in turn unlocks more of the house and lets you buy more stuff for your adventures. 
the fact that this game creates its own faux online experience and the fact that you can download the videos you make with your in-game camcorder really makes this a multi-layered experience for the player. Jackbox is a multiplayer experience in the form of party packs. There are multiple of these packs in the series, each with their own assorted games. And one of these packs is Madverse City. Madverse City is a game where you play as robots who are in a head-to-head -head rap battle. You follow the prompts, which in turn writes you a verse to battle your opponent. During the writing session, there is a cityscape scene that plays. Once you are done writing, another prompt pops up. If you mash any of these buttons enough times, it will influence the scenery in several ways. As far as I know, this is one of the only times this happens in a Jackbox game, and I wish more of these waiting segments had more of these little mini games where you wait for your friends to finish their prompts. Viewfinder's presentation style in terms of gameplay and art design is absolutely incredible. You take pictures of basically anything, and then that Polaroid is able to inflict itself upon the world by replicating whatever was in front of it with the contents of that very picture. When I saw a trailer years ago, it blew me away, and playing the game gave me a similar feeling. During this puzzle game, several minigames can be found. Tomodachi is playable in the form of you nurturing a plant. Here you can play music, water it, and add some sunshine to let it grow. Oh, oh my gosh, a Tomodachi. Do so I seriously just <laughs> play Tomodachi now? I don't know if there's a specific combination I have to do or if this is just like a mini game. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is the gameplay now, oh my gosh. Either this is just for an achievement, or this is to actually, like, proceed throughout the level. Turns out, it's a flower that attracts a bee for an achievement. A Zelda map can also be found in the world, although, as far as I could tell, it isn't playable, though it is a cool easter egg. Tetris is also a game that appears, although it is unplayable. The Art Museum is my favorite game within a game experience, mostly because I found this out of my own curiosity. In one level, you see a triangle painting. If you place it and then climb it, there will be an entrance. Entering in, you will be welcomed with a myriad of paintings. These are prototype photos of the game, a really cool behind the scenes section that is just hidden away. This game is what it would be like to walk into a canceled convention center. What's interesting about this game is that you essentially have to find the gameplay, otherwise it's just a walking simulator. When you find the correct boots, it feels like you're walking into a completely different universe. It's such a cool way to showcase so many different indie games inside one indie game. There are even hidden secrets to collect throughout the experience, which reveal a secret unannounced game, but not just one game several. So basically, you get four games in one. A stealth game, a shooter, a showcase of different indie games, and a treasure hunt. Oh, also, to top all of that off, there is a boss fight. At only about an hour of playtime, I'm actually really impressed with how this turned out, and I wish more studios did game showcases like this.